R&D is on the electronic stabilization of a model rocket. So we all know that there's a lot of things that can make a model not go straight. So what I wanted to do was make a model that would fly vertically uh, no matter what. So uh, since I fly a lot of RC, because I have to get ready for the internationals, um, one year I had an airplane that had an electronic stabilizer in it. Now, this was an Eagle Tree Guardian. Um, what an Eagle Tree Guardian is, is a stabilizer that basically helps the model stay level to the ground. Uh, it flies, the rocket flies, the airplane flies normally, but once you let off the controls, it will fly straight to the ground. It will not crash. So, what it, it uses similar technology to like cell phone, cell phone tilt centers, like to play a game where you tilt a ball or something. So, um, I did try and contact the Eagle Tree Systems, but all they would say was that it used some sort of accelerometers and gyros in it. Now this. This uh, stabilizer has two modes, 2D mode and 3D mode. Um, I didn't test out 3D mode because it was mostly made for aerobatics, so I decided to test 2D mode, which would uh, help level the model. So it needs a full RC system to function, but uh, since I have all that, uh, it works well. Okay, so this is what the Eagle Tree Guardian Stabilizer looks like. Um, and I really like this because it's, it's really simple to change something. Uh, you can plug it into a computer and change the settings from there. Or there's the three knobs on there which, which can correct yaw, roll, pitch, the, their sensitivity. So, on a normal RC airplane, uh, a battery would connect to a receiver, and those in turn would connect to servos. But when using the Eagle Tree Guardian, it would go in between the receiver and the servos. So, for so I had to somehow make a system that would basically work like a uh, airplane, except Rocket Four. So I decided to use. Um, I made four fins that have, would have flaps, like airplanes do, to correct, uh, to, to use uh, yaw and pitch. And so, this is a kind of demonstration of what the Guardian would do. So, on an airplane, uh, let's say the ground is here. If a Guardian was mounted onto here and it was diving down, if I let off the controls, the Guardian would correct it so it would fly straight again. Similar, just like a rocket would. If it was tilting this way, the Guardian would correct it so it would fly straight up. Same with yaw. If it was turning, uh, it would correct both so it would be straight up. And then here's a Guardian. So, this is what my first model looked like. Uh, it used, this was what the fins uh, controlled and it was attached to the servos here. Now, um, since I, I didn't have any room inside to put the recovery system, uh, no, put the electronics, because the recovery system and injection would blow through, 
what I was doing. So I decided that I would create a third and final model. But instead of moving fins, I would use gimbal thrust. Uh, the gimbal thrust model uh, I thought was very cool because I didn't I could use stationary fins and it was a different method, kind of cool. Um, and so because it was uh, gimbals and there's a lot more to it.
next few slides uh, show the gimbal model in action. After this picture.
did, did you have some sort of method in mind when you decided how and which axes to adjust, or was it was it simply dial it back a little bit to see if um, it I think it was more like a trial and error. I would change one, see how it worked. If it didn't work that well, change another. So um, there's not really that much of a way to know which way, because on a real flight, it's going rolling. It's hard to, to know which axis. And that's, that's where, did, the gimbal, did, did your gimbal angle indicator come in when you were? Uh, yes, sort of, yes it did. Yeah. Now, which, that, that was, I thought the gimbal angle indicator was clever. Was that, was that something that uh, sprang through? Yeah, um, I think I noticed that a few of the first camera flights that uh, I did, I couldn't see what was happening down there because, you know, I... I How do you see it? See, so, so I thought if there was something that could stick out that the camera could see, that would move around with the gimbal motor. So I made a few of those, but I thought that one worked the best, so I just used that. When you uh, had the uh, first model of the Atlas Pulse Services, the four servers, oh. were they <laughs> slaving each other basically so they moved together? Yeah, I used Y connectors. Okay. Uh, whereas, were your control systems able to take any of the roll out? Um, were they, well, they not I, working together? Take that, or were they, 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 they did work together, but um, and I think that I can in future times try to take a roll out. But for this project, I just wanted to see if it flew straight. I wasn't aiming to pick up. It, it seemed like some of the flights started with some roll and yes. roll slow. The, the passive pins. I noticed that the gimbal system actually seemed to induce its own problem, where as it began to correct, it started to induce what I would call in an airplane a Dutch roll, where the bottom of the rocket started to cone. Do you think adding the 3D aspect for yaw control might correct that? Amazing. <laughs> yes. What were the diameters of the rockets? Are they all the same or different? Um, they were different. This one we used a BT-101 tube. Uh, this one, both of these were uh, BT-80. BT-80? Uh, BT-80, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, oh. Can you show us where the center of gravity is on your uh, on your um, rocket? Yes. Right up here. Okay, and could you maybe uh, tell us what moving the 
center of gravity, forward or backwards? Yes. How would that affect your the flight of your rocket? A few things. Um, actually, I don't know that it would affect it that much because with the 2D mode, uh, controlling it, controlling it uh, by itself, it should be able to fix its problems. I just keep water all over. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just have one person talking at a time, please? This room is very live acoustically, and even whispers are carrying down to the front. Yep. Yes. One more quickie. I think what he was getting at is, could you make an intentionally obtusely unstable rocket, and would that be able to keep it going straight up? She had actually said that she at one point that she took the fins off because she wanted the rocket less stable. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like center gravity all the way at the back. We didn't get the report, so. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much, Alyssa. Ladies and gentlemen, we're right smack dab on schedule, so we're going to reset from P division. <laughs>